Hi, Scott Whitley here and welcome to this demo video of the uh, Scott Whitley design Brian Eastwood built SWB1 bass guitar. Um, <clears throat> really excited about this is instrument. Um, it's been uh, kind of uh, a long time coming in a lot, a lot of ways. Um, basically, it's a short scale bass uh, and it's kind of been born out of the search for um, the, the perfect short scale bass uh, for, for my needs really you know um, going back a, a good few years um, I first tried a short scale bass I think the first one I tried was a Dan Electro Longhorn um, and instantly fell in love with the you know the, the smaller frets at spacing you know because everything is you know three or four inches shorter um, just down here <laughs> All that feels much faster and, and, and fluid, more fluid, you know. Uh, I've got quite short fingers, uh, and on a short scale bass, you know, I can do that one finger per fret thing really easily right down the bottom end of the neck. Uh, because it's shorter, you're not having to reach out as, as far for your, your, your F and your B flat down there, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, as I say, you know, the, the, the search was on really after that to find a good kind of pro quality short scale bass that I could actually afford. I mean, Alembic do uh, some amazing, you know, the Stanley Clark sort of model, uh, amazing short scales, um, but they're kind of, you know, $20,000, you know. Uh, there's There are some other fantastic companies in America. There's, um, uh, let me think, Landing Bass. Uh, they're great. You can, if you just Google Landing short scale bass, you'll find them. There's uh, Birdsong, another fantastic manufacturer. Um, but to be honest, um, they were all kind of a, a little bit out of my price range at, at the time. Uh, and I ended up playing um, a thing called a Richwood. Um, you know, you've probably seen them in my um, other videos. Uh, and I had a short scale one. Uh, I think they call it the, the Richwood three quarter bass, that's it. Now, 13 scale, absolutely love the bass to bits. Great neck, really slim, everything really comfortable. The only real issues I had were the, the body um, was a little bit small. I mean, it looks like almost like a toy bass when I'm playing, you know. Um, <clears throat> and there were other things that, you know, in an ideal world, ideal world it would have been nice to have 24 frets. Um, and then as, as I got more into thinking um, about you know, the, the, the kind of perfect short scale bass for me. Um, things like the pickup uh, angle thing, which I'll talk about in a minute, came into it. Um, you know, and, and kind of other things. So uh, I got in touch with Richwood with the, uh, the, the design ideas I had. Uh, and my thinking was they, they were already producing an absolutely knockout short scale bass. If they were just to make these few kind of um, adjustments to the design, They'd have, um, you know, uh, probably the best short scale bass in the price range uh, being mass produced. No, you know, no questions asked. Um, but you know, they didn't seem to to be uh, particularly interested. You know, uh, certainly didn't didn't get a reply back. So um, by this point, I'd actually come up with a full design for a bass, this the SWB one, um, and just kind of got to that point where it kind of had to be built somehow. So, um, so I sold pretty much all my other bases 
uh, and all sorts of other gear to pay for it. And I went to a, a local guy called Brian Eastwood, good friend of mine. Um, I've known him for a long number of years. Uh, and asked him, could he build this? And that's what he's done. He's made an absolutely incredible job of it. His son, uh, Michael Eastwood, has also been uh, heavily involved in the build. He's done all the, the polishing work on the body, which is incredible, you know. Um, so here it is, you know. Uh, I, I still have a, a, a dream that uh, somebody out there can uh, would want to pick this up and run with it and in terms of, um, you know, a budget model, you know, kind of three you know, three, three fifty, four hundred pound mark instrument uh, that will be a completely, you know, pro quality playable instrument, um, but, a, you know, a, a really affordable price. Um, but we'll see how we go with that. In the meantime, uh, if anybody does want to order one of these, Brian is, uh, is you know, he's building these one at a time, hand built, uh, very, very special thing. So let's talk about what we've got. Um, the body shape is very, very similar to um, the kind of Alembic I was talking about, you know, like the Stanley Clark thing. Uh, there are obviously differences. It's um, the the two horns, rather than being symmetrical like on an on Alembic, um, aren't. The top horn I've extended here. Now, the main reason is um, to give the the base a bit more balance so that it can put the, uh, the strap button here and the thing sits nicely and it doesn't neck dive. Uh, and it also brings the base a little bit this way, uh, which which makes you know again playing down this end of the neck absolutely effortless. Um, the and, and there's no contouring to the bo the, the body. It's completely uh, like a slab body front and back, but with a lovely rounded curve, which is really comfortable to lean on when you're playing. So we'll just look at the uh, the the wood that's involved. Um, the main core of the body is ash. Uh, we call it bart and ash in these parts. Um, the two thin straps of wood you see there are um, rosewood. It's a very hard rosewood that Brian had. Um, and the, 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 the front and the back, the top and the back of the instrument are maple. It's maple burr, I believe it is. Uh, and that colour is, is, is natural. Um, there's, there's been no finish put on that except clear lacquer. Uh, and it's an absolutely gorgeous piece of wood, you know. So there we go. Moving up, uh, the the neck is um, just maple, no uh, bird's eye, fancy curly maple or anything like that. It's just good old maple. Uh, rosewood fingerboard, which is quite a thick um, fingerboard. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. And the main reason is I wanted the, to be plenty of room for kind of behind the nut bending. So we've got that thick uh, board and uh, a graphite nut there, okay? And this wood on the front, just pretty much for decorative purposes, it's the same piece of wood as this. Just really finishes the base off nicely. <coughs> Excuse me. The, um, the hardware, we've got uh, Wilkinson tuners, which are dead affordable, but really, really good tuners. I, I, I love them. They were on a, um, a V1004 base, I think I had a vintage V1004 base, and they were great tuners, so um, that's what I went for there. We've got um, an amazing piece of kit here, um, a Carla Trem bridge, um, which is really cool. Um, if you don't want to use it as a, um, as a Trem bridge, it can be locked. Uh, there's two Allen bolts there, so it becomes like a fixed bridge. But it's a really, really nice piece of engineering, great piece of kit. Um, good sustain because it's, it, it's got a lot of mass to it, you know. Um, Demarzio Model J pickups, which are my favourite uh, J style pickups uh, of, of, of all the ones I've ever tried. Um, and the, the, the humbucking pickups are not single coil. You've got um, the split coil. You've got one coil that deals with these two strings, picks up those two, and another coil that picks up those two. So, in essence, you've kind of got a mini Fender P type pickup inside there, you know. Uh, and depending on how you wire it, uh, i.e. parallel or series, um, you can get a really P-based kind of tone out of that, really vintage sort of sound, really nice. Moving down, we've got, um, again, my usual choice of preamp EMG, uh, the really affordable, sound great. Uh, this time we've pushed the boat out and gone for a three-band EQ. <laughs> so I've got a uh, treble cut and boost, bass cut and boost, mid cut and boost, and this control here is a sweepable mid, so you can choose what frequency the mid control is, is centered on. 
and then just volume, master volume there. This switch is a three-way pickup switch, so it's just neck, both, bridge. And this switch is a series parallel switch for the humbuckers. So, uh, as I say, you can either, either have them series for that uh, p bass kind of vibe, or you can have them parallel for a kind of brighter, um, sort of, you know, more single coil sort of sound. Okay, so let's give it a listen. Uh, we'll put it into neck pickup position uh, in parallel okay uh, just going to boost the bass a little bit everything else flat there we go let's have a go There we go. Uh, so, yeah, really nice, kind of P-based uh, tone, but uh, but a bit more hi-fi, a bit more snappy, I would say. So what I'm gonna do now is switch to series um, and just play just a little bit this time um, in this series position and just see if you can hear that it, it, it's got a much more full kind of vintage P-based sort of tone. Here we go. So back into parallel, uh, I'm going to put both pickups on now, and uh, yep, same thing, just a little bit of bottom end in there, treble and um, mid flat. Now this is a completely different um, animal tonally, as soon as we go from, from this to the middle, what a difference. Uh, let's play along with the drum machine, let's mix it up, go for a slightly different pattern. Here we go. There 
there you go, completely different kind of tone to the um, the front pickup. And um, I think you can hear it's got this really... <laughs> This kind of nice, sweet kind of treble end, you know, it's kind of... And even if you dial, you know, um, <clears throat> quite a bit more treble in, it's still a really nice kind of pleasant sound. You know, it never gets kind of shrill at all. So moving to the uh, bridge pickup, um, I'm going to solo the bridge pickup. What I'll do is just go ahead and put it in series to give it that kind of slightly more middly meaty thing we were talking about, the P bass thing. Uh, but because it's right back here, um, it really kind of accentuates the mids. It's really nice. Here we go. Let's give it a go. So there you have it, the Scott Whitley SWB1, built by Brian Eastwood Bake Up um, UK, and um, you know available to order from Brian Eastwood if you want your own SWB1. Um, you know all sorts of custom options are available. You can have any sort of finish you want, any wood, um, any choice of pickups. So um, if yeah, if you're at all interested, give Brian a shout. His details are in the video description below. Um, hope you enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.